Hello, everyone. Um, before you watch this episode, I just wanted to pop in and say that we had some technical difficulties during this one. Um, I don't really know what happened, but I think I figured it out for our next episode, so everything should be fine. But um, as you watch this one, you're going to see some major, major visual issues. The audio is all there. It's all intact. Um, and I kind of edited out the parts where we, we discuss the um, technical issues because that's probably pretty boring to listen to. But um, what is still there is just the crazy buffering and low frame rates. So I do apologize. Um, but next time we should be right back on track with our normal quality. So thanks for sticking it through for this one. And we'll be back in two weeks with a new episode. But hope you enjoy this one with Chad Opus, our Valentine's Day special. Hello and welcome to Totally Tell Me, a weekly entertainment review podcast where we talk about movies, music, food, and fun. My name is Dominic Mercurio and I am here with Laura Weinbach. Hello. The fairy welcome. queen herself. She has arrived <laughs> oh, from the fairy myself. realm. I wish. <laughs> you wish you were from... but my greatest wish. <laughs> and yeah. our guest today is Chad Opitz. How's it going? Hello. I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty great. Good. I'm doing great. I'm pretty good. Uh, pretty good. You're looking me. wonderful in your, in your <laughs> Greek goddess fairy outfit. <laughs> it's just a normal outfit for me, guys. Look. Yeah. Is- <laughs> Gotta represent, though. This is by Abigail Adams, for those who don't know. She's an amazing designer. She lives in New York. And if you want to see her stuff, go on Instagram. Type in Abigail Adams. She has an amazing Instagram page. Okay, that's all I'll say. Carry wow, on. wow, 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 uh, Chad, if you don't know him, he's a comedian here in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've actually had him on the show a couple times to, uh, we were just talking about this. We reviewed the Safety Brothers film Good Time um, years ago, I guess, at this point. And uh, yeah. the second one was First Reformed, which I believe came out in 2019. So it's been a while. It's been a minute, as they say, a minute. Almost two years. Yikes. Uh, I mean, a minute yikes. or two years. It's been that long. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great to have you back, Chad. Well, I'm glad to be back through Zoom, through yeah. the magic of technology. Yeah. Um, wow. I guess this is how we do it now. Um, and if you aren't watching, you could be listening on podcast services later on. But we are currently live on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. So if you're listening, you could always tune into our next show, which um, will be February 28th. At 7 p.m., we go live every two weeks, every two Sundays at 7 p.m. So you know, catch us live, and then you can you know chat with us, whatever you want to do. You could you could send us weird pictures, I suppose, if you wanted. I mean, I don't actually want that, but I'm saying like, I guess that's something you could do. Um, you could do whatever you wanted live. I mean, live is like a whole different ball game. We could edit out this whole <laughs> thing afterwards, but you live people get to hear the whole extremely long intro that I'm giving right now. So. That's just for you guys. That's what you missed. That's what you missed. Anyways, um, <laughs> Laura is cringing in the corner. Hang on you if you missed that intro. <laughs> uh, but look, um, we will be reviewing Perfume later on in the episode. Perfume is a 2000 and... Uh, actually, I said 2006, but then I was... I. That I sounds right. I, I think mm-hmm. I saw something that it could have been 2007. I'll look into that in a second. No, but... I believe it was six. It was six? That's what I heard today. Okay, all right, good. Well, great. I'm glad uh, I'm glad I got my facts straight here. But 2006 um, thriller, I guess, uh, that is, uh, well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it in the second half of the episode. Uh, but for now, we're just going to kind of chit, chat, uh, talk about life, love. I guess it is the Valentine's Day episode. We should probably mention that. Um, it's a Valentine's Day special. That's true. Check it out. Happy Valentine's Day, mother freakers. Happy Valentine's Day to you guys. Mother freakers. <laughs> mother freakers. That's why um, we're going to talk about such a romantic film such as Perfume, Story of a Murder. Yeah. <laughs> it is a true romance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least the guy in it is hot. <laughs> is you know he? I mean? it, 
already an interesting tidbit from Laura. Sure. <laughs> Don't you think? Uh, you know you thought so. Oh, I know you definitely were thinking it. Okay, look, I mean... If we're getting yeah, into that, I, I will it. say I there's just moments though. There's just fleeting moments in which he's hot, but then there's other times where I'm like, "That's a hell no," you know? No, he looks not hot even... when he's like not when he's not. Well, we'll talk later. <laughs> not we'll even save like it for the cast. I guess we'll save it for the cast. We'll save, save it for, for the cast. cast. <laughs> um, but anyways, oh, wait, we're on the cast. We are. We we'll save it for are. later on in the cast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, do you guys do anything for Valentine? Are, are you guys like Valentine's Day people? I don't. I don't even know this really. No. I am a person, and I exist on the day well, in which we celebrate Valentine's Day. So yes. <laughs> no, but well, I, it's currently Valentine's Day, so clearly what we're doing is this. Well, so this was my this big. This thing. was my big event for the day. Really? I was like, ooh, you know, people are like, are you doing something for Valentine's Day? I was like. Not romantic, but, uh, you know, we're talking about perfume, a story of a Wait, murder. this is not romantic? Oh, I had the wrong uh, Yeah, you're right. Okay, oh, I it's thought, pretty romantic. Yeah, I thought you agreeing to be on this show was sort of like a gesture. No romantic story of a murder. <laughs> um, okay. It was really adorable. Okay. You were like, yes, with five little hearts. And I was like, oh, my God. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I do something it. fun. <laughs> no, I did Laura? celebrate the holiday in it's in more ways than th than this. Okay. That. What's up? What'd you um, do? Um well yesterday I went to um Helena I call it Helena Bonham Regional <laughs> Helena Bonham <laughs> Carter Regional Park in Petaluma. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually called Helena Putnam Regional Park or something like that, <laughs> which I realized yesterday. I always forget the name of it. But anyway, it's a wonderful, beautiful land place. It's really a fairy tale of a place if we want to talk about fairy tales, you know, and wow. being a fairy queen and whatnot. Um, it's just amazing. It's basically the wind in the willows come to life, in my opinion. Oh, wow. Um, okay. But it was funny because, like, we, me and Anton drove there. We wanted to have, like, a nice picnic, and um, Anton was thinking that we could try. Because you have to kind of hike up to this really amazing spot where we always go. And um, it's under this amazing, beautiful, magical oak tree sort of. It's got its own sort of private Idaho, if you will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you go there and you hike up this hill and you park in, there's like a parking lot and you park, you, you like hike. And he was like, well, why don't we try going the back way? And so I thought, all right, is it going to be faster? And he's like, oh, yeah, I think it's going to be a much more direct route. And so he like parked in this totally just someone's driveway, basically, is what it appeared <laughs> to be. And I was like, I don't think this is it because it was just like a block away from downtown Petaluma. And normally I remember driving down this long road for at least like 10 minutes or something. And uh, I was like, I don't think this is it. He's like, no, I'm telling you, this is going to be closer. And I was like, dude, you better not be snaking me. He's been snaking me into like snaking doing these long, wait, these long walks lately. And I don't like doing long walks. You know what I mean? I like to just get there and enjoy the outside. You wait, know is I mean? snaking me a thing? I've never heard this phrase. Yeah, it's like having, you know, when you get snaked by someone, it's like you're getting getting played up in here. Chad, have you but heard anyway. snaking me? Wait, I need I need confirmation uh, here. I think I have, but it's, yeah, it's again, it's a very infrequent phrase. Okay, okay, all right, all right. It's coming yeah, out. It's I, anyway. Well, you, you said, afterwards, you said, I, I'm getting played, which right. is a more common. Now, well, played. Well, that's, I've never heard that one. Yeah. They're all, you know, they're all one and the same. Okay. Yeah, they're in the same family. Anyway, so right. we're going, we're parked in this backwoods kind of scene uh -huh. and we're hiking up this hill and I'm like, this is hard. This is difficult. It was like <laughs> this up going upward the hell? <laughs> hike, hiking upward up Wait, the hill. You had Very been to steep. this park before and not, yes, gone this but way not, clearly. not gone this route, okay, not okay. Not gone the back, the supposed faster way. I was like, he's like, oh, this is difficult. I was like, yeah, well, hopefully it'll be faster and it'll just be, you know, and then I look, so I look behind us and all of a sudden there's just this long stretch of upward hill that we had gone up already. I was like, oh my God, this better really be a shortcut, you know? I was like, <laughs> I swear, I swear. I'm not vibing that this is a shortcut right now, but I really hope that I can just trust you right now. <laughs> and it's like after about 15 to 20 minutes of just pure uphill, just Terror. trudging through the mud, and like not having a good time, although it was rather beautiful. Um, we get to the top and lo and behold, that it ain't the motherfucking place where we were supposed to go. <laughs> that it ain't. Like, and like, and it was yeah, just dude, the top yeah. of this, it was this plateau and it was like extremely windy and cold. I was like, wait a minute, this is not it. And he's like, 
oh, I wasn't sure if this was going to be it, but I thought it was probably it. I was oh. like, dude, you said you were sure. Yes. And then he was like, oh, it's over there. See that bench? And it was like across the valley and through the way. And it was like far looking away bench. He's like, that's the bench where you pass by that to get to the thing. I was like, if you really think that's it, I'm going to trust you one last time. But I swear, you snake me twice. That's it. <laughs> this is the end of Valentine's Day. <laughs> snake me once. Get Shame to the on freaking... You. We go through another long valley and around this winding just slope of a hill, just over, you know, over the hills and through the woods, as they say. Uh -huh. I mean, it was freaking far. OK, I was hiking and I don't like hiking that much, you know, what I mean? in terms of uphill and like, you know, just stuff that demands physical labor. Mm -hmm. And so we're going and we get to the bench and lo and behold, that ain't the motherfucking place we were trying to get to as well. <laughs> He got snaked and again. It, yeah, and like Snake all I could right. see in the distance were like tracked homes below us. I was like, the place where we go doesn't have any motherfucking tracked homes in view. <laughs> like this is not our place. And he was like, I guess I was wrong. I was like, oh my god. I looked at my phone and well, I guess I didn't look at my phone, but I know for a fact because apparently he found out later. We had walked like nine thousand steps at that point. I mean, I may as well be doing a 10,000 step day or whatever, which it, to me is a lot. And I feel that that's an excessive amount of walking to do in one day. So anyway, right. I was like, all right, we're going back to the car and we're going to drive to the spot. And anyway, and it was totally not the spot at all. It was like at least 10 minutes away from the actual entrance from which we had to do a whole nother hike to get to the place. Well, let me tell you, when we got there, it was rather beautiful. A lovely nice. place indeed, but then it was really windy and really cold, so we can only stay there for like ten minutes. <laughs> but it was uh, fine. It was very windy today. It was. It was yes, this was all yesterday, by the way. Wait, oh, I thought this oh. was your Valentine's Day plan. Well, Wait, we were celebrating Dominic. Valentine's Day yesterday because today was totally tell me. Oh, I see. Dominic, yeah. It, it, it sounds like it sounds like we got snaked. <laughs> I know. I, we totally got snaked here. I mean, what right. the hell? You you snaked yourself. You out here snaking us. over us. <laughs> and, <laughs> You snaked yourself. You snaked yourself. Oh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I was telling the truth all along. Oh, okay. And okay. I'll just add this one last little icing on the cake, not to do with that, but in addition to all of that, we did do get one other fun thing for Valentine's Day, which was, is, we haven't huh. done it yet because we're saving it for after the cast. Oh. New title. Wow. Um, oh, yes. A right. beef Wellington dinner. <gasps> okay, yeah. See, now from that's... a place called Bel Campo. You know about Bel Campo? Bel Campo? <laughs> it's like a meat place that's in Oakland. They have one in San Francisco, too, I think. But I've heard the it's name. It's a yeah. very fancy, like, steak. It's not that fancy. I don't know how fancy it is, but they have, like, all kinds of really good steak. And their their special was, like, you could get this pre-made kind of beef wellington, mm -hmm. and you take it, and then that you, you, hook, you cook it at home. Like, you put it in the oven, you heat it yourself. So you can essentially have a hot off the grill Ooh. meal from okay. this restaurant, and they give you the sauce, and you, like, heat it up, and... And yet it's but it's like made by someone else. So you don't have to like cook it yourself, but, but it looks so good. what you're describing Papa Murphy's for steaks is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Very, right. Exactly. Very classy. Papa Murphy's <laughs> for people. <laughs> you take it, you bake it. You take it, you bake it. That's exactly mm -hmm. the whole idea here. Mm -hmm. But I'm very excited for it. I'm very excited for it. How often are you guys really doing like a Papa Murphy's kind of take? I've never bake. done it. Never have done such a thing. Have My you dad loved Papa Murphy's. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> he would always get this one called the cowboy pizza. Oh Is my that God. like buffalo chicken? Like, I was going to say it was, No, it was like a, it was like a big, like a kind of like a sh big, thick, like deep dish thing. Oh, okay. I don't know what made it a cowboy thing, but that's one he always got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess cowboys like big things. I like a cowboy steak, though. That is a word you want to find when you're looking for steak. Cowboy. Is it called attached. the cowboy steak? Yeah, there's. Well, whenever you see the word cowboy attached to a steak item on a menu, you probably want to go for that. Okay. I've learned what make, that. What makes it so special? It just always tastes good. I don't know. It, usually it ha it's related to a ribeye or a porterhouse, and usually it has a bone in. Oh, you know what I mean? okay. okay. Uh -huh. It's usually a bone, and usually there's like a whiskey reduction sauce involved. Uh, it works. Damn. It works. I'm telling you, I've done yeah. a cowboy multiple times, and it works. It works. <laughs> that cow that cowboy is not going to snake you. That's what you're trying to say. I don't no, think yeah. so. Just not salt in this and pepper, yeah. Sense. Mm -hmm. um, sort of yeah, they do it. They, it's it's a good word to look for. I, I'll look I recommend for it. I recommend it. 
Dame, well, was the pizza do? good? Was the I, I mean, what oh, I'm curious yeah. about was was the oh, yeah. was the was cowboy, the cowboy pizza? Yeah, you don't necessarily. It was. I I, okay. I have fond <laughs> memories of the take and bake experience. Yeah, really? my dad was always like, "We can do it at home." <laughs> you know, he's very he liked that type of thing. Was it so, like we can the price? Was the price the selling point? Was it the fact that it was like a cheaper kind of pizza? Or okay. Oh yeah. Totally. And it wasn't bad, but yeah, you're saving at least $5. I don't know. Between like a Papa John's and a, like a pizza hut or, uh, I mean, between, I, mean I think the cheapest you could possibly get is little Caesars. Little yeah. Caesars, pizza, pizza, $5. But it was, exactly. it was maybe a little bit more expensive than little Caesars, but not much. Really? Yeah. But it was a way better pizza. But it was, it deli- than, did you okay. get it delivered or did you pick it up? We went and picked it up. Yeah. Okay. I have to say, my, yeah, dad, you know, my dad is unbelievably cheap. So like my he dad. did not. Oh my God. He, he my never dad. got delivered. We never got oh, delivered. Oh, interesting. Oh, really? Bummer. Yeah, he would always go pick it up because it, uh, it was a uh, you know saved money. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But I mean, I'll say this: this pandemic has taught me one thing. Sorry to tell you guys, whoever out there is listening that might work for this company, DoorDash. I don't love you. Oh no, they suck. <laughs> what what it's happened? like my food is always soggy. Oh my God, and a pizza. <laughs> I realize I love a good pizza, but then it's like I don't like it when it's not, you know, melted mm. or when the cheese is like gotten hard again. So this idea uh, of a Papa sounds like Murphy. You need to, yeah, sounds like you need to take and bake. I, I, think <laughs> I like the idea of that because one of the greatest things about pizza is just having that cheese stretch out when you take that first bite. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, and like when mm-hmm. it ain't doing that, it ain't a good look. Well, I think a lot of <laughs> you know I, I mean? actually think some <laughs> some fancy spots do give you an option for like a take and bake pizza though like but it's like a fancy pizza and then they give you instructions on how to bake it at home but like they put it all together on their end and they're like look we want you to handle this but it's gonna be top of the line you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i i believe that potentially um what's it called flour and water i think they might have an option for that and flour and water is some that could work fine ass pizza i feel like one of the worst things about this pandemic is that like you can't really have a nice gourmet dinner and i mean you can't you can't get like from a like a high-end restaurant and expect it to have the same effect as if you're eating there at all i mean it's just not going to be the same thing however the idea of the take and bake (laughs) if they are preparing everything and they're giving it to you in such a way that you can prepare you can just heat it and it will be the same as if you were getting it at the restaurant then so be it i think we're due for getting a takeout it could <laughs> you know, like we're too I don't know. <laughs> That's a I don't strong know if you word. Get, like like a, these, like you know, these like these like macro gastronomical kind of things. You know, like micro gastronomy or whatever, where they have like cubes and yeah. froths and foams and shit. Oh yeah, like you know that whole kind of thing. Like I don't know if you can do a take and bake on that. You no, know but I, mean? I think there's a 2.0 version of take and bake that is like ready to go right now. I think we are. We are like incubating this idea right now, and it's ready to burst. I mean, I feel like if if there's call a Shark good, Tank, yes, call him now. we gotta get on Shark Tank. Clearly, yes. Papa Murphy's needs to hire Dominic for the marketing because <laughs> yeah. the way you're talking about it is very, very epic. Call Papa. Like you have a lot call, of blood. call Murphy now. Call Papa. Murphy. Yeah. Papa, call, you got my call, number. Call, call, <laughs> damn. Take and make, uh, take and make revolution. Have you I ever think... seen that? Have you seen that Red Lobster ad from like the early '90s? Which is it was like a, it was like a Red four minute Lobster? long promo that they made. The <laughs> what? Oh no, not Red Lobster. I'm sorry, it's Sizzler. Oh, it's Sizzler. Sizzler. I it's love Sizzler. Funniest, if it, once you're off here, seriously, go uh-huh. on YouTube and look for Sizzler promo, like 1991, I think. Oh, mm-hmm. can I add a side Hilarious. note to this? Oh, can I yeah. add a side note about Sizzler? Just a little sure. fun little tidbit here. <laughs> One time when me and my brother went to Sizzler with my aunt, my brother Brent had to go use the bathroom to um, wash his hands. Oh. And mm-hmm. there was a guy, like, masturbating in the bathroom, I guess. And then he, like... I guess he went to the bath. My brother went to the bathroom or something like that. And then like he came out and then he like turned the faucet on to wash his hands. And he like there was stuff on the handle or something. Oh, like, oh like, God. And he said that it, he thinks that, that it was cum. <laughs> See, that's when you want to take and bake situation. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. want to beat that restaurant. <laughs> that, that, that was a sizzler. That, that should be part sizzler. of the promo. It's like, you ever been in a restaurant? <laughs> Go to the bathroom. Some dude's whacking off. That's why we need a take and bake revolution. 
<laughs> are you sick of getting cum idea. on your fingers? <laughs> that is a perfect idea for the commercial. Are you sick of getting stray cum on your fingers? Are you sick of getting <laughs> cum on your fingers from washing your hands before you want to eat the, at the buffet? Take and bake. <laughs> it's a new revolution. <laughs> we well, boy, do we have no, a solution no, for you. No cum and no pubes on any of these prefabricated meals. Oh yeah. Although we can't guarantee what the guys who we can't guarantee what the guys are doing who are making it before it gets frozen. <laughs> oh yikes! <laughs> so but no don't worry, no baking it will will kill all the germs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chad, I wanted to ask what you were up to. I, I see a couple of fun little things on this little document that I would love to know about. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you auditioned for America's Got Talent. Oh yeah. I did. I did on this this last Monday. I did. What the hell? How did that come to be? Like, what do you have um, to do to audition for it? I got hit up by the owner of the Alameda Comedy Club. He's been doing, like, outdoor shows there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've done that about four or five times, and he messaged me and was like, well, they're doing, um, you know, auditions for America's Got Talent on Monday if you want to come to the club and do a set or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that. But then they messaged me. Like, I was getting out of work early and everything, and then they hit me up, and they were like, the Zoom connection is on the fritz, so I guess just do it from home, which kind of worked out because I, I got out of work early. I came home, got everything set up, and I did like a – you had 90 seconds, and so I just did like a condensed bit of my like closer. Uh -huh. And um, we were – it was just like a, you know, a Zoom room with like six other people, six people auditioning and then like a producer watching. Okay. And you had 90 seconds and then, you know, just move to the next person. And um, Do you I watch the first. other people? Yes, and it was oh, cool. short. There was only six people, and then everyone's doing 90 seconds. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it only lasted like 15, 20 minutes. Right. And, um, yeah, I just did my thing, and it ended up being really fun. Like, it was it was hilarious. The, the, the very last person was a magician, mm -hmm. and he was super good. Like, the, the card tricks were amazing he was doing, but, like, you know, magicians are pretty corny, you know, and just in general. Like, he was all – he was very – he had, like, a – really deep v-neck he was trying to be very sexy oh while he's yikes. Trying, like card deep trick v -neck, that is not okay very deep v -neck, like very deep v-neck okay. like very, i do not, not like a deep v-neck i don't even like a mid v-neck to be quite honest yeah <laughs> so he's very he's trying very hard would be really... i'd like a v-neck want... to go all the way down to the belly button that's what oh I yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> just a little belly button just peeking right out of the v yeah, yeah. Well, that's more of a split neck <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, about America's Got Talent, though. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So when was it that you did the audition? Uh, Monday. Oh, so that was... Oh, was so Monday. have you heard anything like, back? Not even a, no, they said it would be like three weeks or something. Oh, okay. Uh, My friend... And I'm, guessing I won't, for it too. I'm guessing I won't get in, but it's like... Whatever. Why? I mean, I'm glad I did it. It was very fun. Yeah, yeah. Know. My friend, who's a magician, a female magician, also auditioned for it recently. Oh, cool. And she, like, got a call back, I guess, but I don't know. Okay. She still doesn't know if she's, like, going to be on it, but it's oh, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. funny because there's all kinds you of You know when she things. did her audition? When? She did it a while ago. I think at least a few months ago or at least a month ago. Mm. Um, oh, okay. But, you know, I don't know if I should do a secret reveal type of thing on the air, but. Because oh, yeah, then yeah. who it is and what they did. <laughs> uh, well, that I probably shouldn't say, but I also probably shouldn't say some of the other stuff she told me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you're such a tease. I mean, you're, like, saying that, and then it's like, <laughs> it's like, then she we told must like, know, you know? We want secrets. We'll save shit. it for after the cast. <laughs> save it for after the cast. Okay, okay. The post-cast um, thing. It's like everything we were talking about, for those who are listening, before the cast, we were starting to have conversations. I'd be like, you know what? Save it for the cast. <laughs> now it's got to be after we're the cast. here, and we can't even talk about it. No, but um, anything else to say about it? Like, were, were you auditioning with other – were there other comedians that you saw do their auditions too, or was it all separated? separated? It, was, it was six people. I don't think they – I think it was all random. There was one other comic, and I knew the guy. And it was hilarious because he's like an old, he's an older guy and he was doing sort of like dirty, dirty old man jokes. And then one, one of the other uh, people auditioning was like a 13 year old girl whose dad was like right next to her. And like, it was wow. so funny seeing her reactions to like any, cause he didn't get super dirty, but like, you know, he said like boner at some point. She's just like, <sighs> like she looked shocked, <laughs> you know? So that was, my, that was by far my favorite part was just watching her being like, 
I can't believe he's saying that because her dad's like right next to her too. So that adds to it, but it was very Yikes. funny. Wait, did you, was the 13 year old auditioning or no? She was, yeah. What did she do? She sang, she sang hallelujah. <laughs> so she's just like, hallelujah. After she heard the word boner, she's like, I think I should do hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's like, I got to cleanse this whole Zoom. <laughs> or maybe she was like so stoked to hear the word boner that she was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was a anyway. good, it was fun. I, I was a little like, I wasn't really looking forward to it. I hate that sort of stuff. But yeah. it ended up being like really fun. It was good. And it was really short, you know, 20 minutes or something like that. It was enjoyable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you, were you not, you weren't nervous or anything like that? Or I think I was less nervous because I was at my, here. Oh, I think yeah, I would have yeah. been. I think I would have been more nervous if I did it at the club. Um, but since I was just at home, I was kind of relaxed. You know, I had some coffee beforehand and was yeah. just kind of like, eh, whatever, you know. And I don't really, like, honestly, I do not care if I go on the show. Like, sure. it's not like a dream of mine to be on that particular show. <laughs> right. right. So I'm just glad that I tried. And, like, I had a fun time with it. I think it went well. But, uh -huh. I mean, uh -huh. we'll, just, we'll just see, you know. And you know. how many judges were watching? Just one. There was, like, just have one producer. I think they had a oh, bunch of different different Zoom rooms. Like they just oh, oh, picked, okay. they just randomly picked like six people to go in one room and then, you know. I see. Uh huh. Right. I keep forgetting but, that it's on. Z right. Like the whole time I'm I picturing also like that you're in as, the club. As soon as it was done, like the producer was like, "Well, thanks everybody. Bye." And then it was just <laughs> gone. Like the, the, the Zoom just ended and it was just gone. And I was like, "Oh, that was great." Like, because wow. to me, that's like ideal. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, you're not waiting around like, oh, hey, what do I, what do I do and shit? So it was kind of great that they just cut it off. Yeah. Well, I was, yeah, that reminds me. I was watching the Chappelle show last night, or I just, it's now available on HBO Max, like seasons yeah. one and two. I don't know how many seasons there were of that show. Dominic, do you know? Chappelle you show? I mean, Chappelle many. Show? Yeah. Wasn't there? Okay. Or well, Actually, I guess it did get canceled somewhat prematurely, right? Chappelle oh, show. it did? I don't know. I never really watched the show. I always thought Dave Chappelle was really funny, but like I didn't watch the show just because I never got around to it. But I was oh, watching three, episodes. Three there seasons. was like an episode where he... Three only? Yeah, just 28 episodes total. Oh, interesting. That's pretty crazy. Oh, okay. Um, in, there was an episode where he like he comes up with this idea called like wrap it up the wrap it up box or whatever <laughs> like because he's like you know how in in academy award ceremonies or in red carpet award ceremonies they're always like people are always accepting their awards and then they play the music to like make them wrap it up or whatever <laughs> he's like what if you oh, could yeah. have that in a box and use it in real life <laughs> like <laughs> shows him like having sex with his girlfriend and then she's like She's like, um, she presses the button on the wrap it up and then the music starts playing. And he's like, oh, okay. And he like, instantly <laughs> makes himself ejaculate. But like that probably would have been a useful tool if the America's Got Talent people didn't just wrap it up super quickly. Anyway, that's yes. what it reminded me of that. Um, but uh, anyways, wait, what was that movie that you said you watched recently? Oh. I, what was the new movie that you watched? Oh, yeah. Uh, Possessor. What was that it's, on? Or where did you see that? Oh, wait. Was that the movie you were going to want to watch instead of this movie if we didn't do this? Um, movie? No, no. That was it. Psycho Gourmet. Mm -hmm. Psycho oh. Gourmet. Yeah. Okay. And have you watched that yet? Or no? I did. And I liked Possessor more. Yeah. Talk Possessor, about Possessor. What was that about? Possessor is really good. It's about this uh, corporate assassin who gets... There's this like, machine that lets her like go into the body of whoever they need to like murder somebody for like corporate gain. So like she usually goes into the body of like somebody who knows somebody that they need to kill. Oh. Uh, um, wait, wait, what, who it's is sci -fi in this movie? Sci-fi horror. Uh, sci um, I, it's I was talking, it's, go ahead, it's like a low budget Canadian movie. It's directed by, it's written and directed by David Cronenberg's son. Oh. Uh, and it's very similar to that in terms of like, like body horror, psychological horror stuff, and the, also the great. It's got really, really good, like sort of retro futuristic design. But it's you know low budget movie, not a lot of effects, but it, it handles it all really, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, the only there, there's a few recognizable people. Uh, Sean Bean's in it. Um, Jennifer Jason Leigh. Good old Sean Bean. Love Jennifer him. Jason Leigh, though. I mean, yeah, she's love her. 
She's great mm-hmm. in it too. I mean, yeah. Did you see Exit? Oh, so you've seen it. You've seen it. I have seen it. Yeah. I mean, this. I loved it. Okay. Um, I, I, I was talking about it. I think a few weeks ago, um, on this show, and and it's really cool. I'm glad that you have also seen it because I feel like no one saw this movie. Um, but yeah, it's wild, and I especially loved uh, the practical, the use of practical effects. Like it really did feel like some Cronenberg shit. Um, it did. And uh, I, without giving away anything, there's like a certain sequence that happens, like two thirds into the movie. Um, that is like practical effects just like heaven to me. I mean, it was just like so cool. I was like, this is so rad. I think I know what the part where I'm not going to give anything away, but it's it's on the, it's on one of the covers, right? Where it's, Um, uh, oh, uh, no, not that. Um, but it's like, um, it's one of the times that she's entering a body. I'll say that much. Okay. Okay. But uh, there's like just I don't know there's like this wild sequence that I was just so into. I'll describe it. I'll describe it after the cast. <laughs> oh wow! It came out in 2020. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it came out like, But it I came out Halloween. It, it's one of those ones where I was like, I can't believe not more people are talking about it. Like I, I watched it and I was like, holy shit! Like why is this not being like very heavily discussed online or whatever? I also feel mm. like it came during a year that horror really was kind of in a lull, and so it really felt like the time for it to shine. Because, in my opinion, I there wasn't it. really a lot of great horror movies last year. I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of them just got pushed to this year, which hopefully they will actually come out. Like, I'm really excited about The Green Knight, which got pushed into 2021. I'm really excited about St. Maud, which got pushed to 2021. Oh, yeah, like, me too. All these movies that seemed like they might be kind of like the next big horror movie got pushed. And then Possessor came and was great and then went <laughs> it's like bummer yeah i don't i don't see why it didn't get more discussion i really enjoyed it yeah i would yeah. i would highly recommend that one it is very and like all the all the kill scenes are so like i don't i mean i was wincing like during every one i was like oh my god it's, <laughs> it's very very brutal and like the way they film the violence is re- really gross mm-hmm. it's yeah. just a very effective a very effective film all around i thought yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um all right, I oh. do want to get into the movie, and we only have 25 minutes left, so I do want to... Okay. sure. We are going to discuss um, Perfume, A Story of a Murderer, <laughs> or The Story of a Murderer, I should say. Uh, Perfume is a 2006 film um, from... Oh, my God. I, I actually didn't get the, the director of this one. Oh, oh Tom Ta- Tom Tyker. Ty- Ty- Tyker? T- Twiker. 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 Yeah. Um, he Tom did Run Twitter. Lola Run, correct? I, no, yep. it's Tykwer. Tykwer. Oh, okay. So he he yeah. probably most famously Tykwer. did Run Lola Run. Um, and this film, uh, psychological thriller, it also stars um, Alan Rickman, Ben Wishaw, Wishaw mm-hmm. uh, Rachel H- Hudward, and Dustin Hoffman. Um, so, what was that? What did you say? Rachel Hurdwood. Oh, okay. Hurdwood. Yeah, so uh, this film takes place in the 18th century France. Um, it basically follows this one man through his entire life, really, um, as he becomes obsessed with um, sense, you could say, and it takes him to all sorts of extremes, um, much like the subtitle A might man imply. man with an extremely attractive boyish figure. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> That's so, I mean, this is the first point of contention, I must say. Like, he he's, really? like, moderately attractive, and at times he was very attractive, but not all the time, I mean, I gotta say. I mean, yeah, hey. at times he was very attractive, and at other times it was just, like, difficult because he had to be covered in dirt the whole time, and sometimes had, like, an excessively long beard and hair, which was not normal for him, but, like, you could see past all that. Okay, Go okay. Ahead. I mean, maybe, maybe. Um, but look, if you are watching right now, uh, we are not going to talk spoilers at first. If you haven't seen Perfume, you can keep on watching. We're going to make it very clear when we do discuss a uh, story. So um, first thing, we're just going to say our first impressions. Uh, and we'd like to start with the guest here. So Chad, what did you think of Perfume? And also, had you seen the movie before? I had seen this film uh, maybe a year after it came out. Uh, uh-huh. And I 
there was only a, a, a couple scenes that I remember because I wasn't I, was, I saw it with my first girlfriend and so we weren't watching the whole movie but <laughs> there were a couple moments that I for sure remember distinctly and so re-watching it was great because uh, like you can't ignore the ending like we're, we'll talk about that later but yeah. like the ending is amazing and like you uh, sort of demands your attention in, in a way uh, but I'm really glad we rewatched this because it's ama- I thought it was a phenomenal movie. It's very unique, uh, creative. Uh, it's based on a book. It's very um, you, and you can kind of tell it is yeah. like it's like it's you. I was the whole time I was like, this has got to be based on a book because it's just too much like a piece of literature in yeah. the way it's done. It's just like a very vast film. Um, very novelly. <laughs> It, it really is, and like, and not just in the fact that it's like a you know a set a period piece or whatever, um, but it just covers a lot of ground. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, I thought it was a, a great movie, and I also love like the, I mean, if you can get through the first ten minutes and you like the first ten minutes, like you're gonna love the movie in my opinion, because mm-hmm. like the first ten minutes are what if you can get through that, you're gonna be fine through the rest of the movie because it opens very harshly, hmm. and if you can get past that stuff um then you're gonna be all all good in my opinion like yes. i thought it was interesting great, great movie. very very interesting visually um excellent acting mm-hmm. um you know i wasn't i didn't think the guy was that attractive i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i was just like I don't know. but again i'm gonna get on that boat no it's fine yeah, it's a, totally fine yeah <laughs> i was just like all right he's a good actor you know yeah, yeah. but um, he is he fit that part perfectly. He was really, really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, because yeah, there's there you're supposed to kind of view him as both uh, sinister and but also like innocent in a way, like like angelic and mm-hmm. whatnot. Mm-hmm. He pulled up. He pulled off both of those a very great well. Combination of things to embody. <laughs> you want this guy so bad. Oh, what shit. the hell? No, this I mean I'm over wild. it now. I'm over it. I'll just I'll I'll just say this and I'll yeah. let you keep talking. I looked him up afterwards and I'm over it. <laughs> he what? Was it just me. wait a minute? So you were you were all about him just because of this movie? Would that that's Well I'm I'm into out. his I'm into him in this movie. That is insane, Laura. <laughs> that's insane. Oh, the movie, in the movie he's very like I'm not he I was does not look like very weird. Angel. Like no, you were not what? I wasn't rooting for him. His character is very like, like sociopathic. And, no, it's like sociopathic, uh, but it's also like you do have compassion for him. It's obviously like sympathetic to him in the sense that we're seeing everything through his eyes. So it's you have yeah. to have like I think that it definitely evokes that sense of empathy and like you know well we could get into the, the plot line a little bit, but like his character is just so it is there's something very artistic about him and like very like poetic and kind of it it is angelic and it's like that is the kind of guy i used to be so into when i was like in okay. my early 20s okay <laughs> it just I, reminded me of like my youth you know what i mean i was like oh my god i would have had a huge crush on him you know if i like wasn't married yeah. <laughs> there's that old caveat um, I will say i did enjoy, i thought the first i, I personally i loved the last uh, 20 minutes and the first like hour and there was a mm-hmm. chunk there was a good chunk there where i wasn't as interested in what was going on and a lot of that was because he wasn't the focus of it where it was it was more about the, it was more about the procedure police procedural stuff and i i didn't think that that was personally as interesting i was very very interested at the beginning of where he's learning how to make the sense and things like that. Mm-hmm. I thought that mm-hmm. was really good. I thought that, cause I've never seen that type of thing in a film before. No. Yeah. It's oh. not a thing, you know, been, ever been covered. I don't think in a movie. So I was really like, this is extremely interesting, especially from the perspective where he's coming from, where he's this like obsessive, clearly damaged person mm-hmm. who's like obsessed with i gotta find this scent and it's like kind of tormenting him in a way mm-hmm. totally uh laura what did you think first impressions yeah i i thought this was a really fun enjoyable movie with a lot of amazing visceral elements like again i agree the first 10 minutes it's it's so carnal and so visceral and like it mm-hmm. just appeals to all the senses and i love all the macro lens stuff and like just you really get a sense of the place and the setting and and like 
I remember that feeling from the book, you know, about just remembering that feeling of envisioning what Paris must have been like during that time and how it must have smelled. I remember reading the book, I think, right before I went to live in Paris for a little while. I lived there for like a half a year. And so it kind of painted this really (laughs) intense, um, almost grotesque vision of what Paris must have would be like, you know. And I would say, even though I love France and there's a lot of great places and a lot of great, wonderful things about Paris, there is that intense, like almost hideous kind of really pungent aspect to the city Mm -hmm. um and anyway but um i definitely felt that there was an excessively overuse of music um in the movie that distracted me from some of the scenes like i felt like the music took it to a very mainstream place that made it that was like really trying to kind of convey a certain mainstream appeal that had that not been there, it would have fit right into like a very cool, like independent film type of a genre. And it was that. It, it, I'm actually really, really surprised that this was released by DreamWorks. I mean, I don't really know what they're known for. I guess maybe, maybe I'm not sure about this, but maybe they're known for releasing like a little bit more edgy movies than like most mainstream um, film studios or whatever. But like, I felt that there were just things about the editing and definitely the use of music that took it to that like more mainstream place that had that not been there it would have just been a really brilliant art piece you know what i mean and like it would have fit into that kind of category of movies that i really covet you know what i mean and like Mm -hmm. really appreciate and uh, i was surprised because the storyline and the stuff that they included in the movie um it was like not mainstream material, you know what I mean? And especially with the last scene and different scenes in the movie. Um, yeah. I'm not going to say what they are, but like, no, just, yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to come back to that though. Cause that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that. like, I think that they, the way they, they edited them and some of the music, it made it almost feel like a mainstream movie. You know what I mean? Like certain yeah. scenes could have felt much darker had it not been for the like like kind of fantasy type of music that they were going for that was like very yeah. it almost reminded me of like what was a movie that came out in the last couple of years it was like not chronicles of narnia but some cgi version of like a kids fantasy movie that was it the nutcracker i think i watched the, and it was <laughs> it did, was like yeah. trying to be really yeah and i was you like were talking very about appalled by yeah, and, like, it was kind of fun to watch, but then there was just so many things that I didn't like about, I mean, that I don't typically like about current-day fantasy movies because they're all, you know, really CGI'd out and, like, just not really visceral or tangible. I loved how this was uh, that. And, again, I love the story. I did think that they weren't, like, exactly, I mean, there were elements from the book that I feel like were really important to the story that the movie didn't, for me, fully capture. Like, that it wasn't, it didn't even, like, really express certain thing main themes that i remember from the from the book hmm. but i guess, i don't really remember the book that well but i remember really liking it but again i thought the acting like you i thought the acting was great i thought the costumes and the set designs were excellent yeah. and like all the like most of the mise-en-scene was just great and um it was a fun ride a fun watch for sure um yeah. but yeah just didn't like the overuse of music and um that's my main complaint here <laughs> but that's not I can get over that, you know, because I ult- ultimately enjoyed the movie. And I I even though it was actually a very long movie, I had fun the whole time. <laughs> so, yeah. And the only time I did not think the guy looked good was mainly like when his hair was kind of mulleting out a little bit towards the end. Because like in the, more in the beginning part, like he had a perfectly shaped haircut, in my opinion. <laughs> And then, like, when he became all, you know, like, long hair and beard kind of during the Jesus sequence or whatever, that was less attractive for sure. But I was like, underneath all of that is a beautiful boy. <laughs> I just can't get behind that. I can't get behind that. Angel- he did look angelic. And I was thinking, like, Dominic is really getting a boner right now, I'm thinking. I was thinking it. No, I don't know. Because no. well, I felt that he resembled the guy from that other movie. Remember the, the hot French guy that you, like, always told me was... You Xavier Dolan? It. No, he yes, doesn't look anything like Xavier Dolan. Xavier okay, Dolan is a total hottie, but this is just a, a totally Xavier different Dolan? conversation. Uh, no, right, no, anyway. no. 
So what did you think of this movie? It's so funny because I even remember uh, whispering <laughs> over to Josh as we were watching it. Um, and I was like, oh, now he's looking good. Because there was that one. It, the first time I even thought that he started to look good was when he was like walking on that path. I'm, I'll be vague. But like he, he was like walking on a path and there was sort of like um, uh, it was I. Th- when he was leaving a certain city, I don't know. We'll get into it in a second. But anyway, know that and there's like a fork in the, the fork in the road. Uh, before that, I think it was before that, or maybe it was that. Not I don't know. just that. Well, okay. What about the scene when he? I won't go into details, but when he encounters the first, you know, person that inspires no, that's a him hell no. to carry. Absolutely not. The girl. There was a zero. He looked good there, even zero. though he was a freaking creep. Okay, go ahead. Anyways, how um, did you feel I about echo, the movie? I echo a lot of what you guys say. Uh, overall, I really liked this movie. I thought that, you know, it's so creative and the concept, granted, I guess this is also, this is more just praise for the book, but the concept itself uh, is, it just immediately grabs you because you're like, um, uh, when I even heard the concept, I I was like, okay, that sounds cool. But first of all, I didn't even know it was a period piece. And second, I didn't really realize that it was going to be more of like a serious drama (laughs) um, than like a schlocky horror movie. uh, like a, like a drama. I mean, it's not like it's all a drama, but like this is more dramatic than I expected. I thought when I heard about this movie that it was more of like a schlocky horror movie, kind of like eighties, just like you know he he's gonna turn him into sense. You know, like I thought it was just. Gonna I be thought ridiculous. it was gonna be. A, I thought it was gonna be a cheesy kind of horror interpretation of the book too, and I was like, yeah. maybe that's why I never watched it. But I'm surprised that I didn't watch, hadn't seen this before, because like. I would have watched it had I known what it was going to be like at all. Yeah, well, I just had I not I, I had never read the book. Um, I really had very little idea of what I was getting into, and I was pleasantly surprised to find out that it was more like, you know, this kind of epic in a way. It was it was this dramatic epic about this guy who wants to turn people into perfumes, and I'm like, whoa, this is totally different than I was expecting. But I'm way more down actually, and I just feel like the storytelling was really fun. Um, for me, it's kind of interesting because it seems like we have divergent feelings on this, but for me, I was really into the first maybe hour and then it really like fell off a cliff for me and then it never really actually returned. Um, and including the ending, like for me, uh, and we'll get into it in a second here because I feel like we should spend a good amount of time, uh, in, in, um, spoilers, but for me, it just never really, I don't know, like just never really returned to its former glory i was really into learning (laughs) about sense and like um how they're made i had no clue how they were made um perfumes i mean um and also just like what it means to kind of get the essence of something i found it also fascinating and i was like this is such a cool thing you know like i could see myself getting obsessed with this as he is you know i feel like they really sell it that this guy is into this shit and because of that you really kind of get into the nerdiness of it all so with all that i was so in but yeah it kind of turned a corner for me that i wasn't that into um and we'll get into it but yeah overall i liked it though like i think there's so many great ideas here and i really liked a lot of the choices made just like the directorial choices of there's just some really fun creative cuts too like just match cuts of like uh, I'm thinking of specifically this one moment where you see this woman's face in one con- one context and then it just uh, match cuts to like her uh, in a very different context and it just is it's, I just feel like it's having so much fun with being a film you know and being a visual just fun thing to look at and it's just yeah it's interesting that you say that Laura about the music too because there was mm-hmm. something about it that I couldn't quite pinpoint uh that made it feel kind of Hollywood, and that was the aspect that I didn't like. And maybe it is the music. It's the music. You're, you're probably right. Oh, I mean, it was, and all the slow motion shots. I was like, they are doing way too many slow motion shots. Like they're trying to make every moment be epic, and it's like it's too much. It's just let it just act out the way it's to, the way it is happening because mm-hmm. it already is interesting. You know what I mean? But they're trying so hard to like just cram it down your throat with these devices. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That it's it makes it go into a different category of filmmaking. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like that's what took away from it for me. But 
It's, it's risky, past though. that. <laughs> it's risky because I feel like some of that is what makes What's it risky? cool. Like, uh, kind but of using device. But not too much. Yeah, but I know, it's also but like, like when you when you when you cram it down when it's excessive, it just becomes it actually ruins it. It ruins those devices because those devices can be wonderful. You know what I mean? They can be used in a great, effective, really cool way. But then when you do it too much, it actually makes those devices bad. You know what I mean? In my opinion, like it, it ruins it. It ruins the device and it ruins the movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like I don't, I don't remember there being that many slow motion shots oh my god so many i was like counting them it was like yeah, okay, i didn't again i i don't recall i i mean i just don't really i wasn't really aware it was like a combination of the music and the slow motion and it was like <laughs> you know like just <laughs> the music for just, sure i i agree with you for, absolutely because like i i actually thought it was very pretty but in a way like that i totally see what you're saying where they it seemed like it was probably like well, the director actually scored the film too, but maybe he was Whoa. pressured. Oh, that would happen. He might have been pressured by totally. Like I don't. The budget. Know it was like the highest budgeted like German film ever made, and I can imagine like wow. the, the investors being like, "Yeah, it's yeah. got to be Hollywood. You got to have some element like that. Like yeah. put big bombastic score in it or something." Right. Like that. Yeah. And, right. Right. I do want to. I mean, to it's fine to have big score, just not all the time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I just feel like we should get to spoilers because there's so much to talk about and I want to get to a few points here. So if you haven't seen Perfume, uh, we are going to talk about all of the story, including the ending. So uh, if you haven't seen it or you care about spoilers, now's the time to tune out. Um, and with that, uh, I kind of want to skip straight to the end. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but... Um, sure. Yeah, let's talk about this ending. And what you said, Chad, kind of uh, rang a bell for me. Or actually, I apologize. I think it was Laura who said this, but that y that you felt like the ending. Um, I assume the orgy scene, correct? Uh, sure. Kind of like yeah. was the pushing the barrier thing for you, as far as like it, it containing stuff that wouldn't normally be Hollywood, right? Yes. Yes. It. W yeah, I would say that. But I guess I mean just the unfolding of the story in that way, like. It, it it reminded me a little bit of like the new version of Suspiria and kind of in the sense of it being like a very epic, almost like a painting come to life. You know what I mean? Like it reminded mm -hmm. me of like not really a Bosch painting, but some kind of epic religious, you know, kind of just biblical type of scene. You know what I mean? Where it's like there's some kind of rapture happening. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And everybody is looking, you know, biblical and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what? Huh? I think this because this movie was like a big hit in like other countries, and it got mm. basically no attention in America. Right. And honestly, I think like right, like honestly, like the first. It, I worked at a movie theater for mm -hmm. years in Ap Aptos. If we had shown this film in Aptos, I guarantee you, ninety percent of that crowd would have left within the first ten minutes of that movie because oh, like really? it opens with like, baby you know babies in peril and I'm, like mom's getting murdered that part reminded and, like, me of uh, like a Jan Svankmeyer meets like Jean Pierre Jeunet type of movie you know what I mean like there's an audience not, for that type of sh kind it's of yeah not like whimsical at all though it's like oh my god it's it seems so whimsical dark. in my opinion the very beginning <laughs> when the baby like, yeah fish guts and shit the way that it was executed with just like the montage of all these like you know, very kind of intense carnal vision, like images of, you know, worms and fish guts and like a dog smelling dead body and all of those visuals that were very gritty looking. It really, really, really reminded me of a Jan Svankmeyer type of movie, you know, and it's especially the way that it was edited and the sound effects and everything uh -huh. about it. It just was very aligned with actually stuff from that time. I mean, I guess I remember watching Amelie around 2004 or five, whatever, maybe earlier. It looks, it looks glossy. It looks very stylized, but the content is super gnarly. So I know, I but like there were, but like there was stuff like that. I remember at the time coming out that was, there was a lot, there was like definitely an audience for that. I think, I think, I don't know. Maybe not. I, don't, I mean, I guess I, I could be wrong. I don't think that they had stuff that, that like visceral as like, as you were saying, like, I definitely, I don't, I, and I could definitely see like American audiences just not being on board like right away. Mm -hmm. Did you ever watch like Delicatessen by 
uh, John Pierre I, Jeanette. I love that movie, but that I mean that wasn't a hit in America. Right. Or like the cook, the thief, his wife, and her lover. Great yeah. example. Did you yeah. ever see that? I did. That's yeah. you know pretty hardcore. It is. Oh, and how did that do? Well, I feel like end. that had. It's true, but there's some end. pretty hard. No, there's hardcore stuff throughout. Like when the guy gets his face shoved with newspapers and stuff, and like all kinds of. Oh uh, yeah, I guess so. But yeah. no, I mean like there's definitely movies out there that are intense. You know that had a th- a scene. I mean like look, John Waters. I don't know. I mean, Pink Flamingo. But he's not going kind of... off either. Like it's not really. He's not making like. It's not as visceral. Kind of well, he had a huge following in America. There's no doubt. I mean, like his following is in America, probably. but more Maybe. cult. I mean, like because I feel like this is yeah, trying cult. to capture an audience. Like the, it, it feels right. like it's reaching for the stars as far as just like. Yeah. Right. It should have reached for the cult audience. <laughs> yeah, it should have. Yeah. Would have loved this. You know what I, I mean? Agree. Like, had they not tried to be so mainstream, it would have yeah. just been such an iconic, like beautiful indie film in a cult scene you know what i mean like it almost, it almost feels like an extremely like highbrow tales from the crypt episode of the times <laughs> kind of like, yeah the, i know what you mean <laughs> the story is so like kind of nasty where he's murdering women and stealing but it's their, almost like, comical <laughs> yeah it, like has yeah. a kind of comical element to it or something like there's an undertone of like comic com- like it almost has a, it's like cartoonish almost yeah to a degree but it's yep. the way it's shot and especially like the score and stuff is very like it's highbrow. It's not definitely not. Um, that's what I felt like. I thought it was like it, it reminded me of like uh, what's his name who did that movie, the uh, Pan's Labyrinth. You know, um, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo del Toro. Like that's what the music reminded me of, like a Guillermo okay. del Toro movie. Which I'm not a huge. I'm not huge into his stuff to be honest. Okay. Or like, did he do um, the movie? Um, you know that one about the water person or whatever, like. Yeah, yeah. Shape of water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did not like that movie. I'm sorry to say, yeah. I just did not like it. I don't think. You know, lot, I don't know. Did lot. you guys like that? Do you like his movies? I don't know. It's like something about it just. I love Pan's like, Labyrinth. I do not like um, Shape of Water. Yeah, but like I mean, for me, those movies almost could be cool, but then, well, not really Shape of Water, but Pan's Labyrinth, Labyrinth is, was is almost amazing, cool. Though. But I don't know, man. It just. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Shape of Water to me had like some some parts were really really good, but then the it, other shit was just way too heavy handed. Like the villain was just way too over the top for me. I was like, come on, I'm like yeah, we get he's a bad guy. Come on. Yeah, yeah. It was so, it's so, like, too much shit was too obvious. Right. It was like not subtle or something. Like I yeah. don't know something about those movies. They just they feel mainstream, even though they're like mm-hmm. trying to appeal to the indie audience. You know what I mean? Like it's weird because yeah. that. <laughs> But then this movie is like, there were elements of that in it that, but they weren't the whole movie. You know what I mean? Like, I think that ultimately the script and stuff like that and the dialogue and the acting, it actually made it feel more grounded and like more, like despite these devices that they were throwing in there, there was like a really good, you know, acting out of this story going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to talk, I also want to talk about the very, very, very ending basically post orgy yeah. um oh, yeah. when he then takes the rest <laughs> of the mm-hmm. of the woman's perfume uh and that, then the he pe- gets devoured by uh yeah yeah so he takes that and then he basically goes back to where he was born and then he just pours it all over himself and then gets devoured because that was the part to me that was just like i found to be very disappointing and kind of just like what it didn't really check out to me like why to, to me it felt like a step <laughs> down even from the power that we were just shown with the with the orgy like to me the power of the one drop that like changed everyone's you know they they, like just were overwhelmed with love for each other and you know i felt like that was so cool to see the power of that one drop do that with the orgy scene that then to find out that the whole bottle then just results in um him getting eaten and but then nothing at like i thought maybe there was gonna be more to it like oh but then these people k- kind of have it within them and then they like carry oh. that on or something because uh, c- i just felt like well okay so the whole bottle equals death by <laughs> you know cannibalism it didn't really well, feel like, like the power was there for me you know but maybe it's a parallel or like maybe it's supposed to illustrate how this 
whole thing was all consuming for him like he was consumed by his sense of, sense of smell and like his obsession with trying to capture it you know for himself basically or to put it in a bottle and then you know in the end he basically does literally get consumed by it in the sense that he's putting it on himself and then people are consuming him and so it it's kind of like poetically sound in that way in the sense that he realizes that what he's what he wanted or whatever which was he thinks that he's trying he's capturing beauty which maybe for him is what he equates with being love or something like that but then <clears throat> he for some reason can't give love or receive love as the narrator said yes yeah, um, that reason kind maybe of because he was never too. but he was like never given love when he was born like he was born into a hateful situation oh. you know what i mean and mm -hmm. so like this sense of smell was a gift in in it's but it, yet it was like very temporary you know what i mean it was like it was still just this physical sort of formation of something even though the scent the sense of sense of smell is a very interesting transcendent thing right it's like it can take you somewhere but at the same time it is visceral it's like a physical experience in the sense that it happens in a moment and then it's gone you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but there's maybe the memory that lingers on, but it's kind of like something that he couldn't have by just remembering it. He needed to like possess it as, mm -hmm. in its physical form. And so when I guess it's interesting that those people who are in the orgy, like they had, you know, when he just shows like one drop to the whole crowd, they had this crazy hangover the next day and they <laughs> chose to forget the whole thing. Which yeah, is they were like too high and mighty to accept the fact that they might have that urge within them. Right. Or like, cool. the, it, like it kind of like, but it also like dwindles the whole thing down to being a very carnal, like physical experience rather than like a transcendent spiritual thing. Like it almost diminishes it to me a little bit, at least the way I interpret it. I thought of it as like he's capturing the souls of these people in this form of liquid. You know what I mean? That yeah. is like transcendent. But and in a way, it's transcendent. But then it just it ends. Yeah. It ends it in this off. form of a hangover. Yeah. Yeah, and like yeah. mm. a shame and you know and like you know a feeling of um like isolation maybe or something like that and maybe that's what he realized is that this is all just it's just temporary you know what yeah. i mean it's like but a see, physical I, thing i feel like that's an even more and of a so, reason than for it to have built to something know. really exciting to see what the full bottle does you know like what if the full bottle that then, is exciting then uh, well, I don't know. I I just mean like in the I sense of I think it's exciting that it makes people like devour him. I mean, to have this whole thing put, control people to the point where they're willing to become cannibals and like eat the thing that they think is so heavenly. And it also is a commentary on like how people, they find beauty in something and then and they then just want it. to consume it and to the point of destruction. Yeah, yeah it's like. That actually, that, that made sense to me. I, I, I didn't have any issue with that very ending. I was like, oh, that that kind of worked to me like mm -hmm. like, like, you, like you just said like the fact that like you're so like enraptured by something that you want to just like ingest you want to own it you know, yeah you can't just like appreciate it for being there exactly. separate from you like he couldn't do yeah, that he couldn't to, just yeah. let that girl be he couldn't let the girl who the first girl that he murdered on accident he needed to like have it rather than to just admire it and let it be a an a, a a thing of beauty before him you know what i mean yeah like he was just so consumed yeah. but I also so was, that's a commentary <laughs> I, don't know. I was also kind of hoping <laughs> that it was eventually going to lead because ultimately what he's doing to these women doesn't need to involve murder like if all he's doing is it rapping, doesn't right and, and i felt like it I, I was kind of hoping that when he finally meets up with laura <laughs> um the final girl who's kind of like considered right to be the <laughs> most gorgeous in all the land you know that i thought that them meeting face to face and then you know when they have that moment where she opens her eyes she sees him and he kind of hesitates with his weapon i thought that was going to result in like her real or, or, or basically her just like letting him do do the whole ritual right. to her but without killing her you know like i thought right. it was going to result in this turn of like oh why why do i need yeah, yeah. to i don't necessarily need to kill this woman to get her scent like i could just 
wrap her up in this cloth and, you know, scrape right. off the shit. And, you know, like, his whole thing doesn't need to involve murder at all. And I, I, like, I agree <laughs> with, yeah, I had that same thought. However, we never actually see the murder scene between him and the final virgin, you know, the Laura or but whatever. But we see her body. We see her body, but maybe she willingly was... Down I thought she was going to open her eyes. I thought that was the moment. I was she like, did open you know, she's going to open her eyes. She did what? open her eyes. She did open her eyes. As the body? Oh, no, no, no. She opened oh, no, her no, eyes no. and saw him, but yeah. she never screamed. I know, I know. The dad didn't I'm... discover her until the next day. But we see her dead body is what I'm saying. Yes, but what I'm saying is maybe she was like willing to get killed. Maybe she was like oh, any type of thing. I yeah. See. Maybe she is she didn't she w didn't want to marry that guy so much <laughs> that she was like just or maybe take she, me. <laughs> yeah, that or maybe she like thought that dude was hot like I did. <laughs> and she was like, okay. okay, this is a good way to go. <laughs> Loop no, it all but, back. Like, no, I think a lot of the women cool. thought he was hot. I think they all were attracted to him in some way at first. They all were like, what is this angelic guy like doing here because he's, he's like locking eyes with me and they all have this moment of entranced sort of they're entranced by him at first and then he actually I didn't get the weird. sense from the first lady oh, oh I did she looked at him and she was like into him and then he like took her hand he's like <laughs> she's like ah! yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that okay. was weird but yeah but um, oh, right. I mean okay. she was definitely like I think you know kind of entertained by him at first <laughs> no doubt um, um, okay I, we do have to wrap yeah. up in just a matter of a few minutes but I want to give Chad uh, did you have any like final thoughts on the movie or like spoilers and stuff that you kind of wanted to touch on um, I I fully I, I, the first hour I thought was phenomenal mm -hmm. that was my favorite part all the stuff this, the relationship between uh, Ben Wishaw and Dustin Hoffman I thought was super interesting Mm -hmm. I loved all that stuff. I lo I also loved that uh, location where yeah. he's in that um, the perfume shop of, like on the bridge it looked gorgeous. <clears throat> I totally um, agree. Yeah, loved it. Him learning about the perfume making stuff was really really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it did lose me a bit with a. It turned into a, like a like a kind of a tame slasher movie. In a way, when they he, probably like, could have cut down some of the movie. It did, yeah. and I also didn't. It was just super unbelievable that he was getting away with all of these murders in this tiny little town. <laughs> you know, he's like just laying. Well, whereas they're showing all these people like shooting, you know, just ran, ran, random people being killed that like because they think that he's or you know they think they're the killer or whatever. Right. I just I, I didn't. I thought I, you just have to suspend your disbelief with it, you know, like because uh, I don't think he would have gotten away with it. Whatever. Um, but so it lost me a bit there, uh -huh. and then we got back when, after he's been caught, and the last thirty minutes I thought were very interesting. With the, mm. that scene, that scene in the square, another thing I really loved about the movie was the use of like the crowd scenes were very effective. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, imagine when being a, in that scene, like what it was like to shoot that scene. Yeah, and the, the were crowd all those people really just like orgying out, kind of. Probably, it looks like it. I don't think it really doesn't look like there's CG in it. Like, yeah, yeah. Crowd scenes and like every scene where there's like a mass of people looks real. Yeah, and it looks very. Uh, yeah. it, it, that's those are the scenes to me that really <clears throat> feel like I was in that time period. Yeah, and uh, they. I just thought they were phenomenal. They looked great. And yeah, that scene where they're all waiting and, the, and then the, the executioner just gets down. He's like, he's innocent. He's an angel. Like, I just thought that was so well done and interesting. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the angel, the, the, the orgy thing was very effective. It looked, it looked beautiful in, in a, in a way. And um, yeah, even the very ending when like he, you know, decides to, the, the narration thing was a little corny, but I don't know how else they would have done it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I thought that for the most part that was done well. I'm I'm a real hard sell on any narration in a movie, um, but I thought it was pretty well pretty well done. And then I thought I did I did, I was satisfied by the conclusion. I'm not sure how else they would have wrapped it up, honestly, because you do at least I was like he needs some sort of comeuppance in a way. Um, oh yeah. And yeah, it made sense him thinking like what like you said like this is just temporary like. When they mention like, oh, everyone wakes up and they're just like, oh shit, that was that was crazy that that happened. <laughs> I was like, well, since the fact that this doesn't last forever, you know, like, what's the point of point? It's not like he can take over the world, you know. And with like, since that bottle's gonna run out, you know. 
No, he could have um, taken over the world. He could have. He probably had enough in that bottle to like do whatever he wanted to in the world. But he that, wanted to. He wanted to have the thing that he was smelling. Like, for, like he wanted. <clears throat> I think he wanted a being to embody that smell, that he could have and uh, that could love. That he could love and yeah. love him, but he like couldn't have enough of it. Like, I think the bottle yeah. of perfume did to people what smell in general did to him. Like yeah. it did that to them in like a moment, you know, which he had, and in his whole life had to live experiencing that that sense of hunger, you know, of like all consuming obsession, rapturous, whatever. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I will say. I, 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 I think that's why I liked it, the way it ended on like a sort of a low, you know, it's a gross idea, but like, it, that's a, that's a pretty low key ending in comparison to like that orgy scene where, right. you know, he pours it on, on himself and the, the, the lower class people just, just eat him. I thought that that was very effective. And I thought that that was, I don't know. I don't know how else I would have ended that particular movie. Honestly. I'm, I'm no, totally I- down with him getting eaten to, to be clear. It was more just like the fact that th- but then that's all it was, you know, like, cause I want, I, I felt like I was hoping then that we would have some sort of revelation that the people who ate him, you know, maybe have that hunger now, or like, yeah. I don't know, they, they become obsessed by. You felt it like diminished the power of the perfume itself. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I wanted to feel, saying, like, yeah, I wanted to you. feel like the fact that it's a whole bottle's worth versus the one drop to me, it felt like the power, there was a power imbalance there. It felt like mm. then it should have been a permanent or something to these people or like some sort That's of true. major okay. change to the world. But I, I, I mean, I understand that it's kind of like maybe a darker ending in this way that like he just dies and then that's it. But I, I felt like th- we were building to the power of this vessel, you know, like the whole movie is about this and like finally it's here and then it just kind of, I don't know, I, I was... I guess I just was so excited to see what it could do and then for it to kind of just get yeah. diminished was a bummer to me. I will say, like, I... Especially what? Go ahead. Yeah. And then... uh, you're what? kind of cutting out. Go ahead. Uh, the, the orgy scene, he, like, literally sprinkles, like, the entire place, and then at the end, he pours the whole thing on himself. Right. And it doesn't right. really go beyond... Right. That's what yeah, I mean. I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah. But I will say, okay, I, I don't remember. It's been a long time since I read the book. It might have more of an explanation in terms of why he had to kill people um, mm. in the story. And then also, I don't, I, I don't remember the end. I, I want to reread the book. But um, I will say this, just one last little thought, is that in the book, it really um, emphasizes his distaste for human beings in general and, like, the smells mm. of humans. Like, he cannot stand how people smell. He basically... It, I remember it really talking about how much he hated the smell of the of most people and most, like, things, you know? And so he escapes to the woods to, like, get away from humans, you know what I mean? Mm. Until he, I guess, encounters the first virgin or whatever, and then he's like, oh, my God, that that I gotta I gotta get or whatever. Yeah, I didn't even get that they were versions until like halfway through the movie when they finally mentioned like See, that's like oh, a really important versions. thing. I was like, oh right. she's okay. That's what the scent is kind of tied and to. And I don't in a feel way. like the movie like it didn't really express how much he hated the way things smelled before. Like it kind of il- illustrated him in a way as of just taking everything in, um like non well, uh, uh, he wasn't um uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He didn't. Um, he didn't. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, he didn't <laughs> like. He, wasn't ex- like he was non exclusive. He wasn't like exclude. He he was yeah. like all inclusive. He just he was down to kind of smell everything. You know what I mean? And and yeah. um, and like it seemed like he was just experiencing everything in a very you know kind of non biased way. And like. In the book, it's not like that, you know. I, I I remember his character. That was like a very important aspect of his character was that he just hated it. He was like repulsed by the way people smelled, mm. you know, for the most part. And so I don't know. That was kind of an interesting, distant uh, difference or whatever between the two. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, Josh they did, also- that's definitely different. that's for sure different in the movie because at the beginning they even there's a line where like the narrator says like he just took in every scent he was right. fine yeah. with a good smell right exactly like it was so. yeah he was not ex- exclusionary mm-hmm. no i did not get that yeah, yeah you're absolutely. right i mean it's like yeah you just assume that he just 
is loving. <laughs> he's like so excited to smell all these new things when he goes to everything, right, yeah. right. To a new city and all this. Um, and it almost yeah. seemed like they were they were emphasizing the fact that his birthplace was so disgusting that like right. everything else smelled beautiful to him. <laughs> you know. Well, it's almost like because I feel like the book is very much about a kind of like just a repulsion towards humanity in general. You know what I mean? And a kind of a general sense of like just repellent feeling towards all of humanity for the most part and that kind of is the overall feeling of this and and of the book and in the movie that the fact that that was not part of it it feels like that was missing a big kind of point about i mean because in a way though it did make that commentary at the end in a way like the fact that he was consumed and devoured by these human beings it's like it is kind of a like a dark outlook on humanity in that you know it's saying that we as human beings can't help ourselves but to just want to devour the thing the objects of our affections of our desires and like Mm -hmm. we can't just like respect beauty and let it be on its own you know we have to like destroy it in some way Mm -hmm. or whatever with that i think we should wrap (laughs) it up um as much as i would like to keep talking about this uh i think we should call it a day here wellington over here yeah (laughs) I can uh, make Papa Murphy's steak, baby. <laughs> We're gonna start it. We're gonna start the Papa Murphy's revolution. You can make revolution. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> it's their tagline. Look, hit me up, Papa. I'm ready. Um, mm-hmm. Anyways, Chad, where can people find you if they want to um, um, follow you on tw- Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook at Chad Opitz at Take and Bake Revolution. You okay. know, whatever, yeah. wherever. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. It's so great to have you again, Chad. I, I, I apologize yeah. for the technical issues here, but we would love to have you oh, on again. Fine. Yeah. And thanks for having me talk about such an interesting, cool movie. I appreciate that. Thanks for watching it. And I'm, now I, I want to watch the one that you had suggested. <clears throat> Possessor. Possessor. Yeah, you would, you would yeah, like it. Good. No, not that. The other one. <clears throat> the one you, we, What's we the other one? Gonna, the one we were maybe oh, going to watch. Psycho Gorman. Eh, you don't have to watch Psycho Gorman. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> No. This is a way better movie. You made the right call. Oh, good. Well, happy Valentine's Day, people. That was yeah, happy Valentine's our Day. Valentine's Day special. <laughs> we like barely talked about it, but you know, it was there in spirit. It was there in spirit. Uh, anyways, want to watch Chad. a romantic movie with your loved one? Watch Perfume, a story of a murder, or whatever. <laughs> exactly. With that, um, this has been totally tell me. We post new episodes every two weeks. Uh, you can watch us live on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. We will be back uh, on Sunday, February 28th with our next episode. So follow us on Instagram. That's where we usually post uh, which new films we'll be watching. So you can watch it beforehand if you'd like. Uh, And yeah, that's it for all of us at the Totally Tell Me Studios. We'll see you again in two weeks. Bye, everybody. Cool.